Hello everyone and welcome to this week's behind the scenes devlog video and this week I don't have a huge amount of time for development because I'm going to Wolfsburg on Friday to spend the weekend with some friends so to make this video interesting I thought I'd get all the boring stuff out of the way at the beginning of the week so on Monday I did website work and then yesterday I was doing a lot of balancing and testing and then today I'm going to be working through this long list of things that I found yesterday when I was doing all the testing and these were all just little bugs that need to be fixed or things that I thought could be improved so I'm just going to make myself a quick breakfast and then I'll get started with working my way through this to-do list. So first task of the day done and this was something that was suggested quite a bit after last week's video after I was working on the animal sound effects and um, it's also been suggested before as well and that is that the younger animals in the world should make higher pitched noises than the adult animals. So for example you can see in the world here these baby sheep are making quite high pitched noises and then the adult sheep over here are making much lower pitched noises. And you can see in the code it was very simple to implement. All I do is I calculate the pitch based on the growth of the animal and I also add a slight random variation so that they don't always sound exactly the same. Next up today, just a quick UI update to do with natural colours. So some species can have a range of natural colours, like the sheep here can be anywhere between white and black, but other species only have one natural colour that they can be, but in the UI you can see that it's still displaying it as if it were a range. So I've just quickly made sure that for species that only have one natural colour, it now only shows one natural colour in the UI. And secondly, when you're genetically modifying the colour of a plant or animal, you can choose between quite a few different colours, as you can see, and most of them have names because they come from preset colours that are defined in the code. But the top two, these are the natural colours of the plant or animal. They don't have names because they come from the model file of that species. So I've just changed it so that they now say natural colour 1 and natural colour 2. And if I wanted them to have actual colour names, I'd have to go through every single plant and animal model file and name their colours, which obviously I don't really want to do, so I thought this was a good enough compromise. Two more tasks crossed off the to-do list. So baby animals, when they're young, they always follow their parent, but if they don't have any parents, then obviously they shouldn't be, it shouldn't say that they're following parent. So I've just fixed that and it now just says that they're playing around if they don't have a parent. And also to do with the genetic modification again, if you're modifying a trait that's just a number, for some reason when you mouse over the slider, it automatically sets the price to 100 dp, even if you haven't made any change. So I just had to fix that as well. Next up I've just been adding one new task to the game and the first tasks in the game are meant to introduce you to the various concepts in Equinox so that if you've never played the game before it should help you to understand what you have to do and I realised that I didn't really have a task talking about diversity points which are the in-game currency so I've just created a new task to do with earning diversity points as you can see here and if you want to find out more about the topic you can also click on the question mark icon at the top here and that opens the relevant section of the help pages. Also, I just made one quick change to the UI of the tasks, which is that the claim reward button now flashes to get your attention when you've completed the task and you can actually collect the reward. A few more little UI changes next today, so for example I renamed the follow option for the plant species so that it now says view, because obviously follow doesn't really make sense for plants. Also tasks with more than one requirement, if one of the requirements completed and the other one didn't, then the completed requirement would keep counting up past the target, so I fixed that so that it now stops counting once it's reached the target. And finally in the information panel for animals where it says what they eat, the name of the foods would always be the name of the species or the object where the food comes from rather than the name of the actual food itself, which is fine for most of the food types, but for things like honey, which isn't actually an object in Equilinox, it comes from the beehive, when displayed in the information panel it says that the animal eats beehive instead of honey. So I changed a few things around in the code and allowed for names of food to be overwritten when necessary, so now you can see that it correctly says that the sheep eats honey 
instead of beehive. Quarter past one now, just stopping for my lunch break, made myself a quick salad for lunch, and the to-do list is coming along nicely as you can see. I've made my way through quite a few tasks this morning, so not too much more to do this afternoon. And the last thing that I did this morning was another UI improvement. So the growth rate of plants and animals is affected by how happy they are with their environment. And in the entity pop-up panel, I'm now displaying exactly how much the growth rate is affected by their surrounding environment. So I'm just going to stop for my lunch now. And also in my lunch break, I want to do something a little bit different and plant some vegetables on the balcony. And eventually in the next few weeks, I want to plant out all of these containers with lots of vegetables. Um, but today I'm just going to start off small and plant a few radishes. Back to work this afternoon with yet another UI update. I've been doing lots of them today, but I'm trying to make sure that the player is given all the necessary information that they need. And this update is to do with an entity's health. So the health of a plant or animal is affected by lots of different factors. And if you mouse over the health bar, you actually get a breakdown of all the different things that are affecting that entity's health. So you can see that one of those factors is the local population of similar species. And previously I just put this down as a number, but there wasn't really any indication as to whether this number was higher than expected or lower than expected. So I've now changed it to a percentage of the expected population density for that plant or animal. So if the population density is over 100%, then you would expect for that entity to live for less time than its usual life expectancy. Just been doing a quick bit of modelling, creating the younger versions for this tree that I made last week. So I created the sapling stage and also the young tree stage. And I'll export these and add them into the game later, but for now I'm going to do a bit more programming. Six o'clock now and I've just been doing an update to the potatoes. So yesterday when I was doing all the testing, I thought it would be quite nice to be able to genetically modify potato plants to produce more uh. potatoes. So that's what I've allowed for now. I've created a new trait for the potato plants, which is the yield trait. And this dictates how many potatoes or the average number of potatoes that they'll produce. So through selective breeding or genetic modification, you can increase this trait and that will make the potato plants produce more potatoes. So I have to take a bit of a break now because I'm going off to dinner with a few friends in a bit, but I'll be back to work later this evening. Back to work now, and this evening I'm working on something that I first implemented a long time ago, but then never really used since. But seeing as I've still got a bit of time before I can release the game on Steam, I thought I'd reintroduce this system into the game. And that system is the disease system. So I've just been re-implementing it. As I said, most of it's already done. There are just a few more things that I need to bring up to date, which I'll probably do next week. But the idea of this system is that if you have animals living in a habitat that they're not happy with and not suited to, then there's a chance that they'll get diseased, and when they're diseased, they can spread the disease to other nearby animals. Last up today, just been getting that new tree into the game, so I exported all the models from Blender, got them converted into the Equilinox file formats, and then just did all the necessary settings for this new tree species. And I'm really happy with the results. I think it's probably my new favourite tree model that I've made for the game. Anyway, I'm going to stop for the day now. It's getting kind of late, but it's been a really good productive day. And I managed to get done pretty much everything that I had on that to-do list. So that's pretty much going to be it for this week. I'm just getting started with the editing for this video this morning. And uh, next week there's unfortunately not going to be a video because as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I need to fly back to England to sort out some stuff with my bank before I can submit the game to Steam. So I'm going to be doing that next week. Um, but there will of course be a video the week after. For this week though, that is it. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a fantastic week and I will see you all next time.